Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now in this episode of C++ Weekly, I am going to attempt to convince you to stop using reinterpretcast. I will preface this because I know there will be comments that there are a few very limited ways to use reinterpretcast without invoking undefined behavior. And in general, uh, though when we're talking about reinterpretcast, we are basically talking about undefined behavior. We're talking about in interpreting a blob of data that is of one type as if it is a blob of data of another type. And there are many rules in the standard that come into play when we want to talk about strict aliasing, reinterpret cast, object lifetime, and I'm going to attempt to focus on what I think is the simplest way of looking at this. Now I know those of you using reinterpret cast are saying, but I must use it for speed, and I'm going to address that in just a moment. But let's start with the simplest case that I am most likely to hear from people who say they must use reinterpret cast. And this is the case of pulling a bunch of bytes off of some sort of network attached device. And I am going to be doing something different here and let's see how well this works. But let's say we've got a bunch of bytes. These are all individual bytes and I am going to draw out Let's see, that is seven bytes. We can zoom this a bit. And there, you know, you've just received these eight bytes, that's zero through seven, that is, there's eight total here. You've just received these from the network wire and you say, well, I have a struct. And my struct, it contains two ints my favorite struct in the world, which I use so many times on these videos and while teaching. It is a struct called s, and it has a couple of integers in it. So struct s, there we go. So it contains an int and a j, and uh, excuse me, two ints, i and j. Now you say, I know for a fact that this bit of data that I just received from the wire are these two 32-bit integers that I want. And I so you do this, you do a reinterpret cast of these blob of eight bytes into this struct, this struct right here, and you do a reinterpret cast. Now what the compiler is doing is it's generating code that says, okay, these eight bytes, they now represent that struct. So you do something like You're doing a reinterpret cast to a S pointer from some sort of car pointer. You do something like that. And you say, well, I know this memory layout is good, and this is exactly what I wanted. Now, like I said, there's a million different rules that come into play. Understanding this aspect of the standard is very difficult and I think probably on average you have to look at five or six different sections. I am going to go with the simplest definition here that I am aware of, and it comes down to object lifetime. I am now asking the compiler to treat these four bytes as if it's this int i, and these four bytes as if it's this int j. And I should have used a different color there. Here's the problem. There is no integer that lives in the blue circle. There is four bytes. There is no integer that lives in the green circle. There are four bytes there as well. I have asked the system to access an object whose lifetime never began. And accessing an object whose lifetime never began or has not begun yet is in fact undefined behavior. That is one way of looking at this. There is no struct s in this location. There is no integer in this location. There are two sets of four bytes. There's many other rules, I'll repeat, that come into play here. But of course, you're saying I have to do this because copying data around is far too expensive. 
So let's address that briefly. I am, as usual, again here in Compiler Explorer, and let's create our two structs. Our one struct with two ints. I've got my blob of data that's coming in, that is a const character pointer, and I've got some new value and an index. I'm going to take away the index for the moment. Let's say I want to access the third S in this blob of data and set the second element, the J element, equal to the new value. Ah, I can't do that because this is const. Let's remove const habits. I want to make everything const that I possibly can. And because I am dereferencing here, this is a reference, not a pointer. Okay. So I get the compiler generating this code. ESI, this is my integer new value, is being moved into this location in memory. This RDI is blob, that's RDI here, plus 20. Let's see, plus 20. This is eight bytes per structure. I'm accessing the third element, so I'm skipping the first 16 bytes and then writing to j then i skip another four bytes to 20. so that's basically exactly what i expected it to do but as i already stated i'm saying access some object that may or may not have actually been created at that memory location and i just want to break that down as the simplest possible way that i i believe i can explain it here now let's make our version that is in fact not undefined behavior And how do we make it not undefined behavior? First, we are actually allowed to mem copy between character pointers and primitive types, like our integers here. I'm going to create an array of three of these objects because I was working with three of them. And I am going to do a mem copy into this pointer into this location from blob and the size of that object. And of course we need to include C string because that's where memcopy obviously lives. And nothing is happening yet because we haven't actually done anything. We've done a mem copy, but the compiler completely ignored that because what the heck, we're just copying some memory around and then never actually accessing it. So I want to change the second element here. It's J into the new value. And again, I'm expecting the compiler to generate nothing here. And then I'm going to mem copy back from blob from object into blob the size of this object. And we can see that the compiler generated the exact same code, but now in a way that doesn't potentially risk invoking undefined behavior. And there have been many good CVPCon talks on what happens when undefined behavior is invoked and not even just CVPCon. I suggest that you go and look those up. But this doesn't have undefined behavior. And you might be looking at this saying, well, that's a lot of boilerplate, hard to read code. Yes, but it doesn't have undefined behavior. That is what I have to say about that. Now, coming in C20 is standard bitcast, which will actually give us a well-defined way of doing this kind of thing. Unfortunately, no compiler supports it yet. So today, even if Bitcast was supported in every compiler in C20 mode, I am guessing that 99% of you today who are using reinterpretcast wouldn't have access to C20 anyhow. So you can use memcopy, you can avoid undefined behavior, you can do this cleanly. And, and then in C20, when you're able to move to that, 
we can have standard bitcast. And as soon as compilers and standard libraries start supporting it, I will demonstrate what this code would look like with it instead. So uh, stop using reinterpret cast. Getting it correct is virtually impossible. So uh, I hope you learned something from this episode of C++ Weekly, and thanks for watching.